You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 23rd of January and I'm Roland from Milford. Australian employment data was released for the month of December and was weaker than anticipated. Total employment fell 15,000 month on month compared to an expected increase of 22,000. The unemployment rate increased to 3.5% from 3.4%. This softer print gave some market participants confidence the RBA would slow rate hikes, however employment still remains incredibly tight. Again in Australia, the Westpac Consumer Confidence Index was released and improved month on month to a reading of 84. Although an improvement is positive, it still remains below 100, which implies widespread pessimism remains. The Bank of Japan held one of the most hotly anticipated meetings where they presented their plan around quantitative easing and yield curve control. The Bank of Japan have held rates near zero for years and recently allowed rates to move within 50 basis points of this target, an increase from 25 basis points. This was considered a big move, so everyone expected the Bank of Japan to continue to step away from yield curve control. However, much to everyone's surprise, they reinforced their commitment to keeping rates low. This saw the Japanese yen weaken across most major currencies. US PPI fell 50 basis points month on month in December, compared to an expected 10 basis point fall. This is generally a leading indicator for inflation, and hence we should continue to expect overall inflation to come at least in the near term down. US retail sales were also weaker than expected. Excluding auto, retail sales fell 1.1% versus 0.4% expected. Turning to equities, News flow is starting to accelerate as companies either report their quarterlies or provide trading updates should they choose to. We had JB Hi-Fi and Super Retail report very strong trading updates, implying at least in their categories, demand remains elevated. On the other hand, City Chic and Baby Bunting reported disappointing updates and hence, positive outcomes for retailers will likely be quite company-specific as margins come under pressure. Viva and Ampol, who each control the only two oil refiners in Australia, reported generally solid updates. Convenient sales and retail fuel volumes remained buoyant, and for Viva, they achieved a very strong refining margin of around $15 compared to $11.75 for Ampol. Fisher & Paykel Healthcare released another positive trading update, increasing their revenue guidance about 5-9% ahead of consensus. There's some conjecture as to whether some of the benefits are one-off or enduring, However, they are clearly working through the excess inventory in the hospital system built up during COVID. NetWealth, Premium and Hub, the three key independent specialist RAP platforms, all released their quarterly flow results and all disappointed. Hub performed the best, followed by NetWealth and Premium. Although flows remain positive, the momentum has lessened given the market volatility causing system flows to slow. Looking to the week ahead, We will continue to see companies report quarterly updates or trading updates ahead of February reporting as they get their accounts for the key December trading period. This will provide very timely insights into how the consumer is coping with a rapid tightening of financial conditions. We will see Q4 inflation data for both Australia and New Zealand released on Wednesday. The market expects 1.6% quarterly inflation for Australia and 1.3% quarterly inflation for New Zealand. In the US, there's a range of data being released this week, including GDP estimates for Q4, but most of the attention will be on the core PCE index to be released on Friday evening our time. This is the Fed's preferred measure of inflation, and the market is looking for 0.3% month-on-month core PCE inflation. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.